Hello, today I'm going to demonstrate how to use a Sensil SIPM SMA evaluation board uh, to measure incident light and to observe dark counts. The board looks like this. It contains a Sensil C-series SIPM, a bias filter and three SMA connectors. Power supplied through VBIAS, which is identifiable by the red cap. The polarity of VBIAS is also written on the board. The other two SMA connectors are for the outputs, the standard output and the fast output. The SIPM SMA evaluation board is powered by a bias supply of 27 volts and 15 milliamps. The standard output is connected to an oscilloscope and fluorescent lighting provides the input in its experiment. The first measurement we're going to do today is to measure the mains frequency in fluorescent lighting. To do this, we first connect our board onto some optical breadboard for stability and then connect the standard output to the oscilloscope using an SMA cable. And power is supplied using the Keithley source meter. I've set the voltage to 27 volts and I've limited the current to 15 milliamps as per the dash heat specification. The board is then placed within a dark box where there is no light, no ambient light falling on the SIPM. And I turn on the power. We can see that a small current is drawn. This is the dark current of the SIPM which constitutes the noise. We can see that there's a very low output signal. When I open the door of the dark box, we can see that the output signal has increased and also the current. Note that the SIPM is not damaged by the ambient light. And to expose the mains frequency all we've in the fluorescent lighting, all we need to do is reduce the amount of light falling on the SIPM and adjust the scope. The frequency that you will see in the US and Canada are about around 120 hertz and around 100 hertz in the rest of the world. The SIPM SMA evaluation board is placed within a dark box the fast output is connected through two mini circuits amplifiers in series to an oscilloscope. Each mini circuits amplifier requires a separate 5 volts power supply. The SIPM SMA evaluation board is supplied by 27 volts and 15 milliamps from a bench supply. In this second part of our experiment, we are going to observe the dark counts of the SIPM. The SMA evaluation board doesn't have any onboard amplification and the response to, sing to dark pulses is going to be fractions of millivolts. So today we're going to use an amplifier to observe the dark counts. We're going to use a mini circuits amplifier and we're actually going to use two of these in series to provide a gain of around 100. To measure the dark pulses, I have connected the fast output of an SMA evaluation board to two mini circuits amplifiers in series and the mini circuits amplifiers are powered by 5 volts. The board is kept within a closed dark box, so there's no light falling on the SIPM. The SIPM bias supply is powered from a Keithley source meter set to 27 volts, and the current is limited to 15 milliamps. When I turn on the supply, we can see the response to the, a dark pulse. A dark pulse is the result of a thermally generated electron within the SIPM, causing a single microcell to fire. To ensure that you, you can measure this signal, your dark box needs to be completely light tight. If it's not light tight, this is what you will see. So we can see that the, the signal is kind of saturated. Uh, but as we close, we can see just the response to the single photon event. Uh, if I increase the level, we can see there's also a double amplitude pulse that we can see. This is a response to phenomena such as crosstalk. 